Good morning and welcome New Mount Zion Church family and visitors to another virtual Sunday school class from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture. Let us pray. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence, thanking you for all of your many blessings. We thank you, Father, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for supplying all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. As we prepare to study your word, we ask that you will prepare our hearts to receive your word with understanding as we are led by the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will forgive us our sins so that we may have fellowship with you. Help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. Bless us so that we may be a blessing to someone in need. We pray for the under-shepherd of this church, that you will bless him, that you will strengthen him, to give him wisdom and understanding to lead your people after Christ. We ask, Father, that you will bless his family and our church family with the blessings that we all stand in need of. We pray that your will be done so that you will receive all the glory and all the praise. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. The date is January the 22nd in the year 2023. To our visitors, our senior pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are, with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. This quarter's theme is the Lord, our provider. If there is any promise believers embrace, it is this one. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Whatever that need happens to be, he has provided it. Salvation when we were lost. Comfort when our hearts were broken, our daily bread when we hungered, friendship when we were lonely, and wisdom when we were confused. Only he is able to provide everything we need exactly when we need it. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. The Lord, our provider, meets all our needs. Today's lesson scripture, Isaiah, the 54th chapter, verses 6 through 10. Today's lesson focus. God's love demands we spend ourselves ending oppression. And now our theme talk for today. It has been said, meeting needs is the secret to success. This statement is true on many levels. When a husband and wife meet each other's needs, the marriage has a greater chance of success. When a business meets the needs of its consumers, it is usually highly successful. In today's lesson, we will see the amazing story of God's provision through a wide range of circumstances as he meets needs, redeeming, restoring, and giving purpose. God calls us to follow his lead in providing and meeting needs with humbleness of heart and compassion. We must keep our eyes focused on him and the place he is preparing for us. His standard and measure of success are not the same as the world's. We are in Unit 2, God's Promises, with the fourth of five lessons. Join us as we begin Lesson Eight. God promises light. 
the fasting requirement. The Jewish law required fasting at various times. The people did that, but after completing their time of refraining from food, they went right back to mistreating people. God said, that's not my kind of fast that changes people. My fast will be followed by deeds of justice, kindness, and generosity. The father pours out his love on his children. In the same way, his desire is for his people to pour out compassion, especially on those who are oppressed and impoverished. That's spreading God's love and shining his light in the dark places of this world. God's Chosen Fast Isaiah explained that God's chosen fast sets those free who are in bondage. Also, if a person is under financial obligations, this is a time to work something out or let the debt go completely. And if anyone is held against their will, this is the time to let them go. The people continued to say they believed in Jehovah, followed the law, and participated in temple rituals, but the Lord knew their hearts were far from him. Get it right. God did not want people to see fasting as just another religious ritual. The fast God prefers is the one in which human beings love others. He desires his people to empty themselves of their selfishness and behave according to his instruction. Once the fast is over, God wants to see those who refrain from food now refraining from wickedness, oppressing others, and blaming others for wrongs. Stop Oppressing Those who do follow hard after God find themselves employed in accomplishing things to build His kingdom, which is establishing places for the lost and broken to dwell in. As Christians immerse themselves in God's love, it should motivate them to help others and repent of their own sins, including the sin of oppression. Section 1 of our study is the life need and is intended for small group discussion. We are asked to discuss God's mandate to seek justice. After you have read the narrative, God promises light in your student book. Notice question one. Why do you think there is so much oppression in the world? Question one invites us to reflect on why people and groups of people persecute the vulnerable. It may be out of greed because of a lust for power or even a desire to satiate a vulgar craving. Whichever the case may be, People in the grips of evil are always seeking to intensify the suffering of others and to whatever extent a society allows oppression is a marker as to how debased it has become. Question 2. Why does social injustice grieve our Lord Jesus? For question 2, you may refer to verses in the Gospels that show Jesus' concern for the oppressed in his society. Examples might include Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 45 through 46, where Jesus shows his contempt for the money changers, and Matthew, the 23rd chapter, verses 27 through 28, in which Jesus illustrated with whitewashed tombs the hypocrisy of religious leaders who practice injustice. 
Question 3. Why does our servanthood to Christ include ending the oppression we see in our society? Question 3 reminds us that we cannot be blind and indifferent to the oppressions around us. God's love for people is so overwhelming that anyone who is faithful to his demanding love cannot help but seek to remove the burdens and the chains that cause others to groan and weep. Section 2 is the Bible Learning. Study Isaiah's message of God's rebuke and hope. It took great courage for Isaiah to speak boldly to those in control of Judah's political and economic system, charging them with crimes against the poor and the defenseless. Isaiah's hope was that they would turn away from evil so that God's righteousness and justice would once again reign in the land and in his people. The type of fast God chooses. Our lesson scripture begins with Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 6 and 7 from the King James Version. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Verse 7 Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? The Lord God had no tolerance for the people who oppressed the poor and the weak, particularly when the injustice was occurring among his chosen ones. Therefore, when God saw the wealthy and the powerful afflicting his own people, he commissioned Isaiah to rebuke them for their unjust practices. Fasting was an honorable and sacred observance among the ancient Jews, but the Lord expanded on its meaning by declaring that fasting should be done with justice in mind. By justice, God noted that the shackles of injustice must be broken and the victims of injustice must be liberated from their yokes. Moreover, the children of God must share their food with the hungry and offer shelter to the homeless. Furthermore, they must provide clothing to those who are without, especially to their own flesh and blood, their own relatives. Question 4. What sort of fasting from Isaiah the 58th chapter verse 6, did God value most? The Lord considered most important fasts that were accompanied by humility, kindness, and equity. Oppositely, God rejected any ritualized activity, such as fasting, that was overshadowed by the inhumane treatment of others. No amount of pious deeds could atone for tolerating injustice and oppression. Question 5. What sort of priorities did God want to see among his people? In Isaiah the 58th chapter, God used a rhetorical question to exhort his people to be generous rather than greedy, with those in dire need. Such individuals were malnourished, 
homeless, and insufficiently clothed. Indeed, those in need of help included their own flesh and blood, their own relatives. Fasting in Biblical Perspective Fasting refers to abstaining from eating for a limited period. Throughout the scripture, we can see that God's people fasted for a variety of reasons. To express grief over the death of a loved one or a leader. 1 Samuel, the 31st chapter, verse 13. To petition God for a matter of great urgency. 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, verses 15 through 23. To humble oneself before God. 1 Kings, the 21st chapter, verses 27 through 29. To seek God's help. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 4. To confess sins. Nehemiah, the 9th chapter, verses 1 and 2 and to prepare oneself spiritually. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses one and two. Fasting was difficult, requiring self-discipline and sacrifice. It gave God's people the opportunity to devote more time to spiritual pursuits. It said to God, in effect, that the matter they were bringing before him was more important than anything else, even eating. The Essence of True Justice In addition to Isaiah the 58th chapter verses 6 through 7, Micah the 6th chapter verses 6 through 8 provides us with the divine perspective on the essence of true justice. We learn that God's people were quite mistaken in thinking that he would take delight in their innumerable and extreme sacrifices. See 1 Samuel the 15th chapter verse 22, the 51st Psalm verse 17, Isaiah the 1st chapter verses 11 through 15. Admittedly, the Lord had ordained the sacrificial system for the Israelite people. Yet, in this case, the people were clearly using the system to try to buy his favor. They were willing to carry out rituals, including fasting, but were not truly obedient when it came to dealing with others. Against the backdrop of God's redemptive acts, he clarified what he really wanted. Micah, the sixth chapter, verse eight, and also the 15th Psalm, verses two through five, and the 24th, verses four and five. Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, verses 15 and 16. He did not desire meaningless religious acts. Instead, he wanted his people's thoughts, words, and actions to be characterized by equity and compassion. In particular, God decreed that his people make the following three principles a priority in their lives. Number one, to promote justice, that is, honesty and fairness. Number two, to let persistent acts of kindness undergird their dealings with one another. And number three, to ensure that reverence, prudence, and obedience were the foundation 
of their relationship with the Lord. See Isaiah, the 29th chapter, verse 19. Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter, verse 16. Hosea, the 6th chapter, verse 6. Amos, the 5th chapter, verse 24. And James, the 1st chapter, verse 27. The result of genuine fasting, Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 8 through 10. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. God's words to Isaiah's audience were not only words of rebuke, but also words of hope and encouragement. When God's people truly practice justice, a radiant light shines forth from them in the same way as the sun glows in the early morning. Righteousness then will reflect God's awesome glory. Moreover, when people plead to God, He promises to answer their cries for help, replying, Here I am. The Lord made it abundantly clear that His people must cease oppressing the poor, accusing people of false charges, and vocalizing their evil thoughts. Rather, if they provided for the destitute and cared for the oppressed, then their light would overcome society's darkness and their night would become like the sun at noon. Question 6. In what ways would the Lord bless his people? God pledged that the deliverance of his people from exile would break forth like the dawn. Similarly, their restoration to the promised land would take place quickly. In addition, the Creator's splendor would be their rear guard. Question 7. How would God respond to his people's petitions? The Lord declared that he would respond in a merciful, proactive manner. When they called out to him, he would answer. Likewise, when they cried out to him for help, he would not delay in declaring, Here am I. Question 8. What deplorable conduct among God's people did he despise? God drew attention to two kinds of reprehensible behavior. First, the people were guilty of abandoning the downtrodden. Second, the elitists indulged in spreading malicious talk. And question nine. What dramatic turnaround did the Lord envision for his people? Isaiah the 58th chapter verse 10 has in mind God's people's languishing in exile in Babylon. The Lord envisioned a dramatic turnaround in which they would be freed from the shackles of bondage to their foreign oppressor. The light of their freedom 
would dispel the darkness of their exile. Also, whatever gloom they felt would be replaced by the brightness of the noonday sun. We will now close out this section of our study with three Bible extras. Number one, the glory of the Lord. The reference in Isaiah the 58th chapter, verse 8, to the glory of the Lord being the people's rear guard is reminiscent of God's secret presence and constant guidance through a cloud during the 40-year period of wandering in their wilderness. The supernatural cloud appeared to the Israelites in daylight and a pillar of fire went before them at night. Exodus the 13th chapter verses 20 and 22. At other times, the Lord's presence is described as a pillar of a cloud that appeared in the midst of the camp. Numbers the 12th chapter verse 5. Deuteronomy the 31st chapter verse 15. Thus the Lord gave the Israelites direction and protection 24 hours a day. Even during their episodes of rebellion, the pillar remained with them, reminding the Israelites of the Lord's mercy and grace. Number two, an unselfish love for others. In Isaiah the 58th chapter, verses 9 through 10, the Lord urged his people to eliminate the yoke of oppression and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. This mindset is epitomized in Leviticus the 19th chapter, verse 18, which emphasizes loving one's neighbor in a wholehearted, genuine manner. Centuries later, during Jesus' conversion with a religious expert, he taught that loving God and people were the foremost commandments. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 37 through 40. We discover that the Mosaic legal code is illumined and deepened by the presence of Christ-like love. Matthew, the 5th chapter, verse 17, the 7th chapter, verse 12. Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 4, and the 13th chapter, verses 8 through 10. The idea is that a supreme love for God will always find expression in unselfish love for others, including the oppressed and afflicted. Furthermore, just as the Savior loved us and gave his life for our eternal benefit, we also should reach out to others in a caring manner. 1 John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 11. And number three, changes in Judah. Relative peace and prosperity marked the early years of Isaiah's ministry. The divided kingdoms of Israel and Judah observed an uneasy truce which with each other while the surrounding nations posed no immediate threat. Meanwhile, important changes were taking place in the social fabric of Judah. For centuries, the economy primarily had been agricultural, yet now wealth was flowing into the hands of profiters in the nation's cities. Landowners were being dispossessed with their property going to the families of the upper class who were building huge estates. 
Oppression of the poor grew increasingly widespread, and no one seemed to care about their plight. In turn, moral principles throughout Judah all but vanished. The leaders and people of the nation were putting their trust in their possessions. Isaiah had to speak fearlessly, for he knew that he could easily be opposed or misunderstood. Above all, he had to speak with unwavering conviction, for there were others who claimed to be prophets of God, but were in effect spreading disinformation. Section 3 is the Bible Application Comprehend the Kind of Justice God Demands after you have read under the heading to act justly in your student book notice the following questions question 10 what has the bible taught you about social injustice question 11 what oppressions do you see in your world what are you doing about it and question 12 how does injustice manifest itself in your own behavior? How are you addressing that sin? Scriptures such as Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 15. Second Chronicles, the 19th chapter, verse 7. Job, the 11th chapter, verse 14. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verse 8. Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter, verses 12 through 14. And Zephaniah, the 3rd chapter, verse 5, are pertinent to the subjects of justice. We are called to show God's grace to the victims of oppression in unjust situations. As we examine the disreputable aspects of our behaviors and disclose them to others, we need to do that discreetly and compassionately. It may seem as minor as misusing a handicapped parking permit. Praying a pledge not to continue such behavior would be a start to addressing the sin. Section 4 is the Life response be a person who truly exhibits god's justice almighty god is always greed when someone is unfairly treated and he voices his displeasure both through his holy word and his spirit how we respond indicates how faithfully we are following the steps of our lord with the same measure of grace that he has rescued us from the claws of evil, let us devote ourselves to rescuing others from the clutches of oppression. We encourage you to read Defending the Weak in your comprehensive Bible study. The more we pray about it, the better the Holy Spirit may help us see the oppressed people around us especially those whom God has brought into our lives and how we might help them. The prophets called on individuals and the leaders of society to effect change, and we can do that as well. You, your Sunday school class, or your church can help those who need it with food, clothes, encouragement, education, and intervention in oppressive situations. The prophets never advocated violence. They all advocated turning to the Lord and following Him as the answer to such problems. The key verse of our lesson, Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. 
To God be the glory. The Lord our God has blessed us with another opportunity to share in the study of His Holy Word. We thank God for you joining us today and for supporting the Sunday School Ministry of New Mount Zion. The lesson schedule for next week is from Joel, the second chapter, verses 21 through 27. We encourage you to join us if it's the Lord's will. And we also encourage you to, as a family, formulate a plan to meet someone's needs together. Let us close out our day's session as we look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your compassion that you have blessed us with. We ask that you would give us the courage and wisdom to express your justice when others are under the yoke of oppression. We thank you for the changes you have made in our hearts to do what is right and pleasing in your sight for the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen.